Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 100th International Relations Capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. So 100 capsules means 100 weeks. And these 100 weeks mean a large number of global issues we discussed. Of course, one can think of the several issues that we discussed in these last 100 weeks. But interestingly, today we are at the middle of, we are in the middle of a war still, even after 100 days, sorry, even after one year, that is 365 days, the Russia-Ukraine war is raging. And at the same time, there is a meeting going on in Delhi of G50, G20, G20, uh, which of course the main summit meeting is only towards the end of the year. Uh, but as it happened, there are two meetings were held, one in Bangalore of the ministers of uh, finance. So there is a finance track is also for G20. And then a ministerial meeting, foreign ministers meeting in preparation for the summit is taking place in Delhi two days, I think yesterday, day before. So we are in the middle of the crisis. And so we have, we can talk a little bit about what is happening at the moment. When India took over the presidency of G20, there was much expectation that India might be able to play a role in ending the conflict. Because India is now the chair of G20. G20 is assuming higher and higher responsibilities because the Security Council is paralyzed. India has been neutral on this question. Uh, so these are all factors which people felt that might be applicable in uh, the summit in Delhi. Uh, of course, the G20 agenda is large. There are many, many issues, development, economic issues, uh, pan pandemic, uh, then this war. So many things uh, have happened. And so the expectation was that even though G20 has a large agenda, the predominant agenda will be the Ukraine war. Everybody expected that. Although we in India did not focus on that, we were saying generally that we will discuss economic agendas, we will uh, talk about multilateralism, many others, but no mention of the Ukraine war. But everybody felt that at this time, nothing else can be discussed without discussing the Ukraine war. Because if the war doesn't end, then there will be so many issues to be led to the G20 to the soul. And therefore, it may be better to begin with uh, a solution to the, to the war. Then, uh, one other encouraging, encouraging issue was that in Bali, where there was a summit of G20 before India took over, in the summit, in Bali, the declaration contained some uh, paragraphs which were on the war, but it, which could be accepted by everyone, even the countries in conflict, like United States and uh, Ukraine, or NATO and Ukraine, or whatever. So, and the Bali declaration, there, was a, there were a couple of paragraphs which were critical of Russia, very mildly critical of Russia. And even that was accepted because India had proposed it. So our expectation was even though our agenda is different, it is economic and uh, social and so on, and the pandemic, etc. It is on the agenda. We thought that quite possibly the uh, Ukraine conflict will also come up. And there may be some compromises possible. China, for example, put forward uh, a peace plan 
and um, there were some talks and in russia even the you know, foreign ministers of russia and united states talked for a little while and there are so many uh, events taking place but the finance ministers meeting in uh, bangalore showed that there is a crisis because russia and china were not willing to use the language used in but in a bali because they say that things have changed what has changed that is uh, president biden's visit to ukraine and the threat of giving more and more money and weapons to ukraine to fight against russia and therefore when this uh, conclusion when the main meeting in uh, bangalore was concluded and the joint declaration was being drafted both russia and china objected to using the paragraphs in the bali language this was unexpected and therefore our finance minister tried to bring about some kind of reconciliation but did not happen and therefore the meeting was dismissed or the meeting was completed uh, without a dinner and without a photograph and no statement no joint statement instead the president that is president finance minister of india issued a statement on her own behalf and um, the people dissociated themselves with it etc so there was no conclusion in the finance minister's meeting then soon after it came the foreign minister's meeting and for all the foreign ministers came uh, but the discussions were not different in the foreign minister's meeting compared to those at the time of the finance minister's meeting and um, all the statements which came from various leaders and they were talking to the press they were talking to others and they were all thinking that some magic might happen after all this is an interest of the whole world and the situation deteriorates it will be much worse for the world and therefore there was this feeling that something might uh, be done but even after the finance minister statement was not issued and uh, foreign ministers had their discussions most of them of course bilateral discussions telling each other what will i do and what kind of um, you know communique or joint declaration could be issued so these became very interesting and important but it very became very clear by the time the foreign ministers meeting was concluded that there was no chance of any kind of uh, solution and so the meeting ended again a second meeting also ended without a dinner and without uh, a communique and without a photograph so normally what happens is anywhere in the world there are some important discussions relating to an issue of a conflict ongoing conflict then it is quite possible that no agreement will be reached but that we know but here people seem to have thought that the agreement would be reached so there was another setback and the indian prime minister very strongly urged them after all this is in india so we have a responsibility so we would like to have a joint declaration and uh, some solution could be found but in spite of all the activities in uh, in delhi nothing happened and the foreign ministers meeting is also concluded now the other opportunity is for some discussions to carry on till the summit meeting the summit meeting they have to one way or the other decide what to do with ukraine and um, ukraine and the united states are not willing to go an extra mile they want more time to discuss these issues and russia and china are keeping out others are willing to talk but uh, there is much to talk because different agenda items in different uh, groups so this is the situation so maybe first discuss whether we see any hope in this war would there be a compromise what are the likely uh, con- likely conclusions uh, will there be a call for russia to withdraw from ukraine that is what most people want other people who are more friendly to japan says okay there is this thing we can discuss it and um, anything that happens in delhi will be reported and so on So this is a, this is a situation, uh, but it looks as though 
the meeting is being concluded in that sense because there, there's no possibility for reopening any of those issues. Um, I myself thought that maybe the meeting will be extend, extended for a day or so, but since the summit is some sometime away in December, they thought maybe it was not necessary to do that now. At one stroke, they can do that when the war is over. All, all the ministers are also still there. There has been a quad meeting, etc. Uh, informal consultations are possible even, but it doesn't look probable because of the heavy shelling, etc. taking place in Ukraine. And Ukraine is getting ready to engage in a war stronger than what it is now. All this potent, not very well for India's own position and image. So maybe I can stop there. And uh, if there are questions, either on what I have just said, or generally on the agenda items uh, on the G20 or any other aspect of international relations that you would like to ask me about. There was some hope that India might be able to do something in these circumstances. But uh, those who have watched the Bangalore meeting and the Delhi meeting, it doesn't seem likely. And I think Mr. the Prime Minister has not felt comfortable enough to come up with a proposal or a, uh, or a message. He has only been urging them to act. He has not given him the many suggestions as to how to act. Everybody knows the answer. The war has to stop and there has to be negotiation. And that's all. There is no other option. So whether you have this uh, statement of Bali reproduced in the, um, in the de declaration or not. In fact, it is, de it is uh, reproduced in the foreign affairs, foreign minister's uh, declaration. But it says that paragraph one to three and then the last paragraphs are all accepted by everybody. Which means the steep paragraphs relating to Ukraine have not been accepted by everybody. So this may not cause any big issues as such for India, but Prime Minister is very disappointed and he has spoken about it and he was hoping that people will come around. But these are such important issues uh, that uh, nobody would want to interfere in this because they may give suggestions, options, etc. Uh, but this is eventually between the Russians and the and NATO the Americans, and um, there is there doesn't seem to be any opportunity for a breakthrough because uh, even today there has been fighting, uh, rather serious uh, fighting taking place, and uh, um, they are very upset about uh, Mr. Biden's. Uh, uh, you know, support for Zelensky, saying that uh, he will give them $500 million and a lot of other equipment and so on. So all this put together doesn't seem to be any hope. But then, of course, the summit is only in December. And uh, con consultations can continue. Maybe somebody will be able to, able to pull, a, you know, uh, something from the hat. <laughs> And something may happen. But that is, after these two meetings, it is not very uh, positive to think like that. Well, if the war stops, it is important not only for India and the global community, but for everybody. That I'm sure Russia and Ukraine will also be very happy. But the problem is that the position is so strong on its side. It's crystallized in such a way that it looks as though China and Russia will certainly uh, will not accept any compromise being suggested. So, which means it's a failure. And people are already saying it's a failure. But the summit is still coming. And at that time, things may change also. And there is that expectation that something might turn up to make it look good. But as of now, we have uh, given them the facilities, the opportunities, ideas, perhaps, uh, but uh, nothing seems to be done. So that was not related to G20. Egypt is not in G20, but that was a bilateral visit. And uh, naturally, 
our pres our prime minister and the president of Egypt must have talked about all this, but that was also in the bilateral context, basically. And maybe Egypt wanted to be in G20. That's another issue which is pending. Um, so those could be the ideas that we floated. But uh, I say I don't know uh, what kind of uh, discussion took place on uh, on the Ukraine Russia war. So we don't know what exactly. Will it convey the West and Russia the idea that we are ideologically neutral regarding the war? Yeah, these are these are ideas. They are, of course, NAM is not a united group in this because a lot of countries are voting against Russia in NAM. There are only very few which vote for. Uh, Russia. And so, what can the NAM do? Because NAM's position will also not be acceptable to Russia outside. That the war should end and there should be negotiations. So, our discussions with uh, uh, Egypt or later with any other country may not have a bearing immediately unless uh, it was Mr. Blinken who said that, you know, if Mr. Putin wants it, he can. You can stop the war immediately. We will not stand in the way. But that's not what Putin thinks. He has also his own objectives. And so he won't be happy if somebody just says, please uh, stop the war. And he's not inclined to do so. In fact, his idea is to make it more intense in order to teach Russia a lesson. But Raisin and Dialogue is uh, informal conversations. I mean, if there is agreement, anything can come out of it. Uh, new ideas can come, old ideas can be sorted out. And that is going on on one side. That's why there are several paragraphs in the agreement, and there's only two paragraphs on which there is no agreement. So that shows that uh, the, the discussions in the Raisina dialogue is not really having an impact. Because Raisina Dialogue is an annual conference where people we invite people from outside important uh, dignitaries and thinkers and so on, and then discuss every issue. So our issue, discussing issues is not so difficult, but uh, the agreement will be difficult. And if there is fear about the Americans will immediately launch a foreign affairs, uh, you know, think tank or something, and then start declaring. You know, or at least saying that uh, it should be a you know, India should be at the center of G20, etc. This may be, this may be going on, <laughs> but we really do not know whether there will have any impact. That's a that's an immediate question of which we are all concerned, and uh, we are all in the uh, revision stage. Uh, trying to pick up whatever we have learned and try to see what questions are likely to come on the basis of which we are in students. That's what we are doing. I was actually this morning, uh, you know, reviewing uh, one of the uh, question papers with my students to see how much of it they know. They know quite a bit, uh, but um, the subjects are so wide that we don't know whether it will uh, have any impact on the final results. But uh, what we need to do is to just keep our ears and eyes open till the examination day. Because you may, some people may think that, you know, already the question papers must have been set. So what is the point in our trying to, uh, you know, influence anyone by discussing it? Uh, but we don't know what the situation is. So, Deep divisions will be there between Germany and US and so on. And our foreign minister is there, so he will handle it effectively. Maybe he will discuss it only in the groups, or he will uh, uh, he'll, uh, you know, hold discussions with these countries separately. We don't know yet. Because today the foreign minister was busy with the Quad meeting. Which is, which is, 
to four countries, US, India, US, <clears throat> India, Japan, and Australia. And so the Quad meeting was being held in Delhi. And so this is an important issue on which Quad could, have, could take an initiative. So all these are possible. Uh, domestic, of course, people are saying that this is uh, being designed in such a way that it's supposed to suit India's candidacy, you know, India's elections in 2024. But Mr. Mo may not have any concern about that. When the latest elections in the Northeast, he has already won hands down. So there does not seem to be any challenge to his uh, leadership. But he would certainly, would left to himself, would like to see peace prevailing. And the Chinese are difficult customers for us. So we don't want to uh, somehow or the other get involved in this in order to uh, have a good conference, but that's not enough. If this conference is ended, something else will start. And therefore, it's a difficult time that uh, uh, the foreign ministry is going through. Yes, uh, not with neighboring countries. Of course, SARC itself has a lot of agenda items relating to uh, the drug menace, etc. But it's not a, just being an agenda item. Is the possibility of a resolution of the issue. And uh, most people, most observers do not uh, believe that uh, important should be decided in this meeting because of these very many. That I have had lots of exciting times, very enjoyable times at all in 37 years I served the government of India. But there were certainly disappointments and tough fights and uh, hard negotiations, and you are not able to hold on to something that is somewhere very dear. Yeah. So all these issues will come. Uh, but as far as I am concerned, I had two big challenges. One was the uh, military coup in Fiji. I may have told that so many of you about that. And that was many years ago, more than 25 years ago. And, uh, things have changed. I have, in fact, gone back there, back there in 2016 and 2017. The Rambuka, the leader of the coup, was very, he is now the prime minister, was very nice to me and he was very helpful. I met many, many friends who long lost and did not have any to tell us. Um, so that is where we are. There are many challenges. And the second challenge was, of course, um, in Kenya, we had a different problem of a physical attack. But there were very many interesting experiences in many places, Washington, in Tokyo, in New York, in Thimpu. So there are so many of it. I've written a book, as I'm sure many of you may have seen it. So this is a mix. You cannot say that everything is so pleasant and so beautiful. But everything was important, because whatever you do in the foreign service is very important for our country. And only if you do that, you will be able to make a name for yourself. Well, we are always participating in that framing, but not directly or, uh, or first hand. We only contribute understanding, contribute uh, position papers, understand the mood of the country that you are serving in, and generally help the government to take these decisions. As far as I'm concerned, I was mostly in the uh, United Nations post, where we always had something to do in framing the security policy. Uh, I was on the on the National Security Advisory Board also, after I retired from the service. So in many ways, we have contributed to policy, but we will not be able to identify and say, this is a policy which I did. It's not like that. You tell them the options, you tell them the pros and cons, and it's up to the government to decide to take action. So uh, but we, when we come, we'll go to Delhi, of course, we become like that, and we also handle uh, policy matters. but. Generally, uh, the job of the diplomat is to basically keep them informed and take action which is necessary even if they, you cannot consult Delhi and explain to them what you have done and they will decide yes or no. So that's going on. Yes, our inform whatever information we gather is uh, passed on to people in Delhi who, who make, make policy.
Who knows? <laughs> I mean, astrologer can tell you. Uh, but uh, but we know the situation is bad in Pakistan. They have had uh, all kinds of problems, especially governance problems, and um, you know, putting in jail the leader of the opposition for years together without any sign of any hope. And the uh, situation in the border being uh, very tense. Yeah. In all this uh, situation, what can we do? Pakistan, of course, has been propped up by the United States in the past and now by China. And they cheated the United States by using the money which was given against her to be used against terrorism. They used uh, to strengthen their own ter terrorist outfits. And the Prime Minister of uh, I mean, the uh, Delegation has been uh, visiting delegations, IMF and others have been telling Pakistan to change its, its lifestyle so that uh, they can conserve the foreign exchange and do things. But it is a military dictatorship in a sense. Pakistan has always been. So they may not be able to get out of the situation very fast. They have asked for IMF support. The Chinese don't seem to be worried about it. We seem to be more worried about it than China, because we are next door. And uh, But there is no clarity. India certainly wants a powerful and uh, strong uh, Pakistan, but we don't see it emerging like that. So that every uh, crisis comes up, uh, we know that the Pakistanis do not have the clout to do anything about it. And so the situation remains as it was even before the Bali conference. But there are signs China is trying to uh, bring up the innovative proposal and also to uh, see whether some solution can be found as well as Pakistan is concerned. I can only speculate. I cannot tell you how Iran will react. You know the situation that uh, Iran uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Axis has been fought, even though we have very good relations with Iran. And Iran also has uh, many serious problems inside the country, the hijab problems and uh, reported differences between the various power centers in Iran, etc. Et so all these are there. And Raisina dialogue is uh, an informal conversation <laughs> and uh, it's held every year. Iran has participated in it before. But at the moment, the, the atmosphere in Delhi is very tense because of Ukraine. So there could have been something in that uh, dialogue uh, video which was put out. Uh, some, it was a promotional video for uh, G20. And there may have been some references there which Iran did not like. I don't know what exactly has happened. But certainly such things will have an impact on bilateral relations. Uh, but I do not know enough about it. And uh, we have had several problems with Iran in the past also. But you have been able to resolve them. So I'm sure this will also be resolved. But complicated, further complicated with the Iran, uh, sorry, China, Russia axis, which might look at Iran as also a possible comrade in the so-called uh, peace initiative of China. So there could be so many sensitive issues and I'm sitting far away from Delhi, so I don't have even the even the rumors, only have the reports. And so, but uh, but I hope we have, since we have a good relationship with Iran, we will be able to, able to maintain it, whatever may be the misunderstanding. Then bilateral relations with Afghanistan, that of course. It is non-existent in the sense that we have not recognized Afghanistan yet. What we are doing is only to give them humanitarian assistance. So, Taliban is not showing any regret over what happened. They are not revising their policy towards the women of the country. And we don't have any diplomatic representation in uh, Kabul. So, these are all issues which have to be dealt with. Then, in a one stroke of a pen, you cannot stop a war or start a peace initiative. So, But this has gone on for years, and therefore suddenly a result may come after you have uh, 
you know, prepared and taken the exam. What can I say except that you must be able to be balanced and controlled and uh, and and you are <laughs> already done several examinations, so you shouldn't be uh, worried about it. And don't forget that it's a competitive examination. It's not you are, uh, you know, you are not in a vacuum. You are in a group of people who have similar backgrounds and they have studied more, longer. And so various factors will come in the determination of the final results. But what you can do is to stay calm and uh, follow developments till that morning and uh, put it across in a, in a delightful manner to the board. And the secret of the interview is that you should uh, consider yourself, you know, fortunate, fortunate enough to participate in this kind of discussions, etc. So you get a better understanding of the issues. So people who have followed the lectures also followed the question and answer sessions and the, um, you know, whatever else happens in a conference. Uh, but the important thing is that we are able to make people after COVID, many of us have been homebound. And uh, therefore, all these factors will come and uh, those have to be tackled. And you must take care of your health. Don't allow anything to slip. And uh, try and uh, do what you can. And uh, bring glory to yourself and to our country. I don't know. I, I don't know. We have all great respect for uh, Prime Minister Modi. And, uh, we would not like others like the BBC or Hindenburg or Soros or anybody else to criticize him or his credibility. Because whatever may, he may be doing, there is a very important angle to India's own rising, India's own developing its own capacity and so on. And so individual people or individual uh, you know, institutions hold this view, it is unfortunate. And I'm sure Prime Minister Modi will take necessary action to respond to these questions and challenges. And he has been speaking out also openly on this, that uh, you know, he should be part of this solution. And everybody has to cooperate and uh, then prepare a world order. That's what he's trying to do. In the process, he had got closer to Russia, but he, that is his mind, even though he would like to uh, leave that grip and try and work for the, for the United States. So, okay, then have a pleasant evening and uh, uh, please follow the discussions today. The idea was to uh, sum up, wrap up the world, <laughs> which we discussed for now 100, 100 weeks. It's always fascinating to talk about international relations, but understanding it minute to minute is not an easy job to do. And uh, that's what we are supposed to be doing as diplomats. And so we'll continue to do our best.